Hello, this is topic 7-3 over Pythagorean triples and the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So we've already talked about the Pythagorean theorem, just to review. It is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so uh, we can always just, if we have a right triangle, we can always find that third side using Pythagorean theorem. However, sometimes we have what are called Pythagorean triples. That's when A, B, and C are all integers. And we can determine if they're a Pythagorean triple by seeing if it works. So the question, is this a Pythagorean triple? Well, this would be A, B, and C. So let's try 3 squared plus 4 squared. And then we'll try 5 squared. Well, 3 squared plus 4 squared is 25. And 5 squared is also 25. Those match, and so, yes. It is, in fact, a Pythagorean triple. So, 3, 4, 5 is one of our Pythagorean triples. I'm going to go ahead and mark that one down here. 3, 4, and 5. Here are some other ones, uh, 5, 12, and 13, 8, 15, and 17, and then 7, 24, and 25. We can also have multiples of these, so I could have 6, 8, and 10 would be a Pythagorean triple. Uh, 10, 24, and 26 would be a Pythagorean triple. Uh, these are what we would call prime triples, means they're at the very bottom. Uh, just one of a handful of prime triples when everything is below 100. Um, if you're good at remembering Pythagorean triples, that's awesome. It can help speed you along when trying to find that third side of right triangles. Now, that's Pythagorean triples, really not a whole lot to talk about, but let's go ahead and sit, uh, talk about the converse, or actually not even the converse of Pythagorean triples, let's just recall the basics of a triangle. Now, I can only make a triangle if the two smaller sides are larger than the third, so A plus B must be greater than so let's see, well 4 plus 5 equals 9, so that would be a yes. Uh, 4 plus 5 equals 9, that would be a no. 4 plus 5 equals 9, that would be a no. 9 is greater than 6, so that's why that one checks out. 9 and 9 are equal, that's why that one does not check out. And 9 is less than 10, so it also doesn't check out. Now, we can only be a triangle if the two smaller ones are greater. Well, I can actually take that a step further and use that to classify triangles. So, given the sides, we can very easily classify it as scalene, isosceles, or equilateral. But what I want you to know is that we can also go ahead and classify them by angles if we know the sides. And that's based on the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Now, we know that a right triangle is formed when c squared equals a squared plus b squared. We get an acute triangle if c squared is less then a squared plus b squared, and obtuse if c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared. Let's go ahead and put this into practice. First off, we want to see if this is a triangle. So 5 plus 4 is 9. I'm looking at that 12. No, this is not even a triangle. Moving on. Well, 6 plus 8 is 14. Yes. 
And so I need to try 7 squared is related how to 6 squared plus 8 squared. I know that's 49. And if I do 6 squared plus 8 squared, I get 100. Well, 49 is obviously less than 100. So I look at my rule and I get acute. Look at number 10. Well, 1 plus 3 is 4, and the square root of 10 is approximately 3.16. 4 is bigger, so yes, this is a triangle. Now we need to classify it. So the square root of 10 squared relates how to 1 squared plus 3 squared. Well, that's 10. And uh, 1 plus 9 is 10. Well, they equal, and so this is a right triangle. And now for our last one, 3 plus 4 is 7. And the square root of 27 is approximately uh, 5.20. Uh, 5 so yes, this is a triangle. And so the square root of 27 squared relates how to 3 squared plus 4 squared. Well, that would just be 27. Uh, 9 plus 16 is 25. Well, 27 is larger than 25, which I go back up here to my obtuse. And that's the rule that I'm following. So, uh, quite simple. None of this is hard. The biggest thing is that you're going to want to remember this part right here to determine if it's right, acute, or obtuse. Good luck on your assignment. Have a good day.